We are travelling through the North Island of New Zealand in our Haima camper. Last episode, we left Ahipara heading south through Broadwood and down to the Hokianga Harbour where we crossed over on the ferry to Rawini. Here we enjoyed a coffee at the boat shed and had a look around the older buildings. That night we stayed at Kotu Point before moving on to Opanoni. We headed south visiting Tane Mahuta and then on down the road further to Dargaville where we checked out some of its attractions, namely the museum, town area, and a local boat regatta. So we're just heading off to Bailey's Beach, which is about 11k here from Dargaville. Not a lot of room to park up there, but we found a park. <laughs> yep, no caravans. And I'm just gonna take from there, no campers as well. I yeah, don't think I'd be um, taking the camper down to the beach. The track's been washed out a bit by the stream, by the looks of it. They have a uh, 30k limit on all the beaches here I notice so they do allow cars on there but um, I'd imagine at your own risk sign up behind me there about um, if you spot a Maui dolphin to report it to dock while this looks a drive at a beach boy the waves roar right in somebody's outside must be quite a rub when this water runs back out. A pretty dangerous looking beach. Yeah, I'm going to Devil and Toes. See? Oh! It takes away from you actually. Yeah, it does. It's not nice though. A couple of big um, floats, sea boys or something. What's it made out of? Out of the way. This is the Bailey's Beach Camp. It's um, known for its Kippa Saver. A few people went over here. The cabin's there. Those big yellow ones. It goes back a bit actually. We headed off from Bailey's Beach around the corner to Kaiwi Lakes. Yep. I'll let Amanda tell you about them. And so they're probably about 20 k's out of Dargaville. And you drive in sort of through quite a lot of greenery, and next minute it appears, there appears these lakes, which are freshwater lakes but have sand and amazing blue, blue water, as you're probably about as you're seeing right now. Here we are at the Waikiki Lakes in the beach. like a sandy beach, but it's not a beach. Beautiful colours. The water was so clear. Is it? There's a couple of options to stay at the Kaiwi Lakes. Um, one is a sort of more major motor camp with um, kitchen and bathroom facilities. Um, and on the opposite side of the lake, there's a domain type place that has what, water, rubbish. And toilets. And toilets, one set of toilets there. We camped here at Promenade Point on the opposite side of the lake. It was just a short track through the dunes to have a swim. 
from where we were parked. Even managed a nighttime photo, the sky was so clear. So there's a small lake just beside um, the part of the Kaiwi Lakes, which is Lake Waikiri. Um, and they're having uh, model boat racing these uh, radio control yachts so um, the um, nationals for the racing event because they're a New Zealand rated boat. So we popped around there and watched them before heading back down the road. We stayed here just for one night and now we're going to go back to Dargaville again and do some washing, fill up with water and then we'll see where we go from there. That's the office over there the and rubbish. It was $30 for two adults, so. And we went to Munga Tuppery where Helen and Nick from Dunedin um, have bought an avocado orchard and so they hosted us on their property. And we were there for two nights. We stayed in amongst the trees and had a nice barbecue tea. I have to admire them both really. They've uh, already had a lifestyle block in Dunedin and he's come up and taken on this avocado farm that's uh, been overgrown and things. He's been building sheds and trying to get the avocado trees into order and setting up the swimming pool here. Um, the gardens have been quite beautiful in their day but they just let go. And uh, Nick and Helen are doing a great job tidying it all up and getting the avocado trees cut back, replanted in an order so they're better producing. This is Helen and this is Nick who have been our hosts for the weekend. Helen's the one I think that does all the work. I caught Nick having a beer when I arrived and Helen was out working so I've been <laughs> giving him a hard time ever since that it's Helen that does all the work around the place. So I'll be watching Helen and Nick, thank you very much for your hospitality. So we're just leaving Nick and Helen's to go to Whangarei. Only 20 minutes down the road from here so we'll go in and resupply. So we carried on to um, Whangarei and headed down to Manganese Point. A chance to take out the fishing rod and um, have one night there. Warning the motorhome members here to check out down below to see if there's enough park and enough turnaround place. Um, while it's suitable for small campers, um, if you had a big bus or a caravan, you'd need to check out to make sure you can turn around. Once you get in here, there's lots of nice little spaces looking out on the water. I'll be coming down here fishing tonight, I think. It's also the other side of the parking area where the sign-in shed. Um, we actually came down on this left hand side here and parked down below but these parks here on the other side have got great views over the harbour toward Marsden Point and even have a wee hill with a seat so you can sit here and ponder the day away. Are we ready to hit the road? I think the farm's running down the accommodation. Amanda's doing the navigation, working out where we're staying next. And so then, basically from there, we were beginning our descent south. Um, we ended up in a park over property out of Matakana, as we're about to go for a wedding. We're just on the bypass. The Brindurwins are only open to northbound traffic, not southbound. So we have to take a diversion through Waipu Cove and Mungafai as we make our way towards Matakana and Lee. You head over the hill from um, Waipu Cove and you come to Lang's Beach and it's just pretty stunning. The flooding of the traffic has also um, given this bypass a hard time down here along with the green Flooded down the river.
arrived at Willow Park in plenty of time. Uh, Willow Park is a pop, park over property. And Gary, who owns the property, has made these three gravel areas that you can pull up on. He's also got some larger parking area down below on the grass. I think the um, major score on this one is the view of um, Willow Park. It's just stunning, um, sitting there watching the sun go down at night. So we've come a small way down the road to Lee, where the wedding's going to be on, and we are staying at the camping ground. At Lee. Just a small camping ground, but um, be handy after the wedding just to be able to pop back home without having to drive in the middle of the night. While we're here in Lee, we might as well check out the wharf. I might bring the fishing rod down actually. Oh, it's just like a inlet, there's the beach over there, see? It's great. Quite picturesque down beside the wharf here at Lee. Having a wee lock to see whether it's worth bringing the fishing rod down, and then I found a nice wee sandy bit just over there to the side of those rocks where it meant it could go for a bit of a swim. Water feels not too cold. Let's see how we go. So the rod's in. Just got some bait on now, a shrimp. <laughs> because the soft baits weren't really working. And um I've had a good chance of catching myself a mermaid out here. I've seen one just over here. This is my mermaid. <laughs> we also popped over the hill to look at the Goat Island Marine Reserve, where you can go diving to look at the fish. Um, we just really had a swim. So here we are at Cape Rodney, they're calling it. Um, and we've Goat Island Reserve, it's a marine reserve. We're just going to go down, I'm not sure what the swimming's like, but we're about to check it out. Oh. These guys out here, we've got double snorkels. The water was pretty fresh, but fine once you got in. Um, no fish around this area, although I did see one. And we didn't have flippers, so we weren't willing to go for any further out in the water. We're just leaving Lee here, um, and we're off to Omaha Beach which is 17k from here and we're going off for a brunch to have the final celebrations for Henry and Sophie's wedding. If you ever come to Lee, come to this wee coffee shop here, it's quite nice. Get nice burgers, good coffee. So there's quite a contrast between Lee, which has been built up for a long time, and Omaha Beach, which is all the really new buildings in this part that we went to anyway. We enjoyed a coffee with all the people and a swim. Time to head off again. We're just leaving Omaha, Omaha Beach. Uh, there's a famous, quite famous golf course, and we've just had a lovely swim here. Lots of kind of flash places that are done up, that are closed up at the moment, we think from Aucklanders holidaying up here, so there's not a lot of people around. Our last step is to Snails Beach. There's a couple of freedom spots for camping beside the beach that the council let you stay on. And uh, we have popped over here because we'd had friends that had stayed here before, said it was very good and very peaceful, relaxing spot. Had a bit of a ride of the bikes, a wander along the beach, and uh, checked out the local shops. They even have a ferry tree on the foreshore with little ferry houses. Now 
South Beach will say goodbye for this episode anyway. We're off to the Gulf Harbour to stay beside the Yacht Club and we'll catch up there when we see you next episode. Thanks for watching.